Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Cold Waters once more. And it's, so to my surprise, as much as anyone else's, it's another surface ship video. On the advice of some of you folks at home, I decided to give a surface ship campaign a go with the uh, Soviets, actually. Um, and I discovered it was quite fun. I did I did have fun with it. I, I, I decided not to go ahead and do a, um, a career mode series with it. But I do recommend you give it a try yourselves, because they have definitely tweaked it since i last tried it as people in the comments suggested um they definitely tweaked it and it is a lot more fun now still a little bit silly on occasion if you ever bump into an enemy surface ship group they completely and actually obliterate you and blow you out of the water within seconds with missiles that you can't really avoid because there's so many of them um but um, on the missions where you get to go and hunt enemy submarines um it's actually quite fun and quite challenging and i've discovered actually that i really enjoy um, the Soviet surface ships. Now, last time in the previous video of the channel with Cold Waters, we had to go in the county class British destroyer. Um, and it was all right, but I find the Soviet ones are a lot more fun because they they reward you for being a lot more aggressive with them. And the reason for that is because they have these things on the front here. These are called hedgehog launchers or RBU 6000s or you know, whatever, to, to use the Soviet nomenclature. But basically, these are weapons that were invented by the Allies during World War II to hunt German U boats with. And they are essentially depth charges that are launched with rockets off the front of the ship instead of being dropped off the back of it like they used to do. Um, the advantage of that being that you can obviously keep the enemy in your sonar while you're firing at him instead of him going into your baffles as you pass over him to drop the uh, depth charges. Um, and the Soviets were still using these things in the 80s, um, it seems. Even though the uh, that the NATO wasn't. You know, like, NATO doesn't use these things, uh, at least not in this game anyway. Um but the Soviets still use them, and I find that in, in 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 engagements with enemy submarines in this game, the RBUs are a ton of fun to use, and I hope we'll get to use them today. Um, so we're going to be in the Kara-class large anti-submarine ship today because we're going to go against a group of two to three American submarines, and I've deliberately selected the best American submarines, so like they're good, fast, uh, nuclear attack subs. Their Los Angeles classes, permits, narwhals, all that good stuff. Uh, because I find that they definitely give you the most challenge. Unfortunately, I did find with the Soviet campaign, it starts you off going off against, going up against sort of like uh, diesel submarines like Oberons and Cobbins, and it's a little bit too easy because their torpedoes are crap, and uh, you're able to just really quickly blow them out of the water with depth charges. And it's not, I mean, it's quite fun, but it's not very difficult or challenging. Um, so I've decided today we'll go with one. Soviet surface ship. We can't have any allies after all in cold water, sadly. So I'll go with the Kara, which is a really good Soviet ship, and uh, see how we fare against three, two, two or three. It's random, but uh, two or three of America's best nuclear subs, and see if I can survive. I, there's a very good chance I might not actually, because these guys can be quite nasty. They have good weapons, and they're not afraid to spam them at you. So <laughs> we have going for us. Well, a selection of SAMs we won't need. Anti-missile defense, which we might need. Um, in fact, to be honest with you, if they do send missiles after us, I might end up using the SAMs. We'll find out. Um, we've got 65 three torpedoes we can launch from tubes on the ship. Um, they're not going to be very good. They'll mostly be there to make the enemy go defensive in an emergency. We've got wake homing torpedoes, which are use, used against enemy surface ships, so we're not going to use them either. We've got decoys. Um, we've got UGMT-1 torpedoes, which are anti-submarine torpedoes. We've got Rastra B missiles, which are missiles that airdrop these UGMT-1 torpedoes into the water. They're very, very useful because it means you can drop torpedoes on somebody's head very quickly. Then you've got an RBU-6000 battery and an RBU-1000 battery, which are the um, ro rocket-propelled depth charges, as I mentioned. And then we've got our AK-726 guns which are these ones on the side here. We probably won't use them unless the enemy blows ballast in an emergency and surfaces, in which case we'll shoot them to death. Um, we also have one CAR-25 hormone ASW helicopter, which has a pad on the back here, although I don't know if we'll actually be able to use it. I've noticed with some of these ships they seem to be a bit bugged, and the helicopter control panel is not present on the screen for some reason, which is a little bit annoying. Um... Regardless, we'll give it a go. This class is an enlarged and improved derivative of the Cresta 2 design. Gas turbines have replaced the earlier steam plants, and the ships carry more extensive command and control spaces. The ASW weapons fit is identical to that of the Cresta 2, but AA capabilities have been improved with the addition of SAN for launchers amidships. 
The larger size of the hull has also made it possible to fit these ships with both, both the bull nose bow sonar as well as the mare tail variable depth sonar found on the Cribax. That's the uh, toad array, basically. So let's do this. Uh, we've been assigned command of Tashkent, C-2006. And let's do this. Let's close to as short a distance as we can. Exo status report. Um, get rid of the wake homers. We don't need them. Give us a couple of decoys. I'll load one in right away. Uh, we've got eight Rastra Bs to play with. I'm going to get rid of the... Actually, I think I'll keep some of the UGMT ones because I think you might need them to reload your helicopter with, but I'm not sure. Um, we've got 80 Storm missiles and 40 OSA MA missiles as well. Uh, 20 rounds of RBU battery shots. And yeah, that's sort of it, really. Fill up on set 65 threes. 800 rounds for the guns. Eight Rastrum B missiles on the vertical launch system. Here we go. Alright, Sierra 1. Let's turn on our radar and all that gubbins. Deploy the towed array. We've got a trawler behind us. We must protect the Soviet fishies. Oh, it's a Norwegian trawler. Well, that won't do. We must steal the Norwegian fishies, and these Americans are going to try and stop us from doing so. Those gits. Should we try and identify this guy? What are you, sir? Ooh, might be an Ohio. Which is an American nuclear missile sub, so... Don't see them very often. That's an M2 troll. It's a Danish, right? We're stealing all the Scandinavian fishies today. All of your... All of your tuna is belong to us. Master 4 here. What are you? Don't know what you are, actually. Not a British sub. I decided not to include British subs in the random generator because they... They're a bit easy to kill with their tiger fish, honestly. Oh, it's a blue whale. <laughs> it's a whale! It wouldn't be a cold waters video without a whale, would it, now? Alright, we've lost contact with the Ohio. I think what we need to do... Is, uh... I think we need to go active, speed up. Retract the toad array. Start banging away on active sonar. Play like a Russian. Don't play like the like NATO. Play like a play like a Soviet. Which means go fast, go loud, and fire all of the things. As soon as we've got a good location on this guy. Right, we've got Sierra 5 now. What are you, sir? I don't know. You're not an Oberon. Oh, it's a pair of Ohio's. Oh, wow. Okay, so as you can see, these are huge American nuclear missile submarines. How close is he? A little too far away for our RBUs, but not for much longer if I keep hitting this way. Right. Give him, give him the good news. Have a Rastra B set. One over here for you as well. Drop another one there. They're launching torpedoes at us. Let's change course a little bit. They haven't fired any harpoons at us, which is a bit of a shame, actually, because that would have been spectacular. There he is. About to have some torpedoes dropped on his face. I love these Rastra Bs, they are great. I'm gonna fire a decoy towards them, I think, as well. Load the second. Go this way. These pop noise makers, he's going evasive. Looks like it's just two Ohio's today. Alright. I'd like to get close enough to use my RBUs. That's basically my main goal at the moment. 
Close the distance. Um, I don't appear to be able to launch my helicopter, unfortunately, because as I said, you know, the aforementioned um, UI bug has happened. Basically, uh, it seems like any time you're in a surface ship with a with a with a towed array, it it covers up or doesn't work with the. Um, try control video. It's a thing here somewhere. Add-ons, HUD adjustments. Switch that out. Maybe that'll. No, doesn't make a difference. Um, yeah, if you've got the if you've got a towed array, you can't use the helicopter panel. They seem to be, occupy the same space, and one covers up the other, which is a little bit annoying. So um, I can't launch my helicopters, even though I'm supposed to have them. If I've got a towed array, which is kind of anna uh, annoying, really, but never mind. We'll make do without helicopters today. Okay, are we in range yet? Almost. Bit of time compression. All right, enemy torpedo in front of us. Let's change course. He's just about in range, I think. All right, target him. Oh, this other Ohio's got two, two torpedoes coming in on his ass. Oh, is he gonna dodge it in time? Look at this huge thing move. Looks like it might get him anyway. Yeah, all right, that's one hit. Okay. Let's target you. And let's let's have the fireworks. Ooh. Looks like he's been hit. We're firing our hedgehogs. Ceasefire. Here comes the good stuff. Oh, he is diving like a maniac. Is it going to catch him? Looks like he's managed to get under most of it. Torpedo still hunting him. Give him another round. From the launch, on the front there. Whenever you're ready. I've noticed that I managed to get in front of my own decoy. That's quite funny. There we go. He's going, he's running fast, he's running deep, and he's changing direction a lot at the moment, which is uh, definitely what you should do to avoid RBUs, although he's mostly worried about the torpedo, I suspect. Yeah, it looks like he's dodged that round of RBUs as well, but he didn't dodge that. Give him round three. Now he's been hit, and now he's slowed down. Oh, he's blowing ballast. He's blowing ballast. He's heading for the surface. Will he make it is the question. Because uh, he does have incoming right now. Looks like most of it's missing. Ah, Chooksy bugger. Alright, if he comes up to the surface, we'll just nail him with the guns, so no worries there. What about his friend? He seems to be... Okay, you're damaged and trying to surface. You're damaged and trying to surface. Okay, we might end up finishing both of them off with the guns at this rate. <laughs> Good grief. Let's see what happens. He's going to surface? He's indeed going to surface. There we go. There's us in the distance. Tell you what. Open fire. Might need to turn a little bit for the guns to actually get in firing arc. Finish him. There they go. They're firing. Takes a minute for the shells to actually arrive on target. Which is a neat touch. Come on, mate. You can do... Your accuracy could do with some work, apparently. He's going back down again. Alright. Fire the RBUs again. 17 rounds of these left, so plenty of ammo. 
see it firing in the distance there. Oh boy, he's getting nailed right now. Have a, hey, you know what? Have a set 65. Be careful when you launch these because I've had them actually turn around and hit my own ship before, which is uh, always quite embarrassing. Oh, he's sinking like a rock. Uh, I don't think he wants to. I think he might be sinking for good. You can stop firing that now. Oh, there you go. That finished him off. Got a direct hit on the nose. Right, now I just have to deal with this chum over there. Fire another round. Not within firing range, huh? Well, in that case... You know what he can have? He can have one of these. Not get him moving and shaking. Oh, look at the oil slick. Look at the oil slick. That's awesome. And the the wake left on the surface from when he actually just when he went up. In fact, I think that wake might have bugged out a little bit. I'm not sure it should still be there. <laughs> oh, there's a trawler over there. They're getting quite a show, those Danish fishermen. How deep has he gone then? I don't see him right now. Oh, he's quite deep. In fact, I think he's sinking. He might implode soon. Conditions. Oh yeah, he's getting pretty deep. I don't think he intends to. He's like treading water at the moment. He's got his bow planes all the way up. Oh, and this thing's coming for him now. Should be the final nail, final nail in his coffin, I expect. There we go. Well then. Score two for the motherland, everybody. That was a little easier than I thought it would be. Alright, leave combat. Two Ohio's and we sunk them both. Hmm. How about we go round two with some slightly tougher opponents? Alright, here we go, folks. Round two. Against potentially a tougher opponent. Ah, oh, another trawler. It's a British one this time. Come to steal your cod as well, sir. Hello. What are you? What were you? Not sure. He's gone now, though. Okay, let's see. Let's go active, I think. Speed up. Um, don't collide with the trawler wherever it is. It's out off that way somewhere. There it is. Alright, we've got Sierra 2. Pinging from that direction and that direction. We've got a launch. Have one of those. Let's launch a decoy. Let's turn that way. Got another one. It's a Los Angeles class. Okay. It's an LA class. I'm Again, I'm surprised No, they're not using harpoon missiles on me, but also maybe that's for the best. Uh, you in RBU range yet, sir? Not quite, but you could be soon. Lost him again. Okay. Let's reload a second decoy. 
CO3 and CO4. What are you guys? What are you? Genuinely not sure. Need to get a good solution on these guys to be able to reuse the RBUs effectively. But at the minute, I do not have good solutions. I have poor ones. Alright, he's popping noisemakers over there, whoever that is, so that means he's going defensive. Alright, we have the, the LA again. He's also going evasive. He will be in RBU range shortly, actually. Let's turn back to the right a little bit. Alright, he's in range, fire. So he's firing. See if any of these get him. He's maneuvering a lot, so it's not a given thing. In fact, he's just turned away from them. Fire again. What is Sierra 4 over there? Another LA class. Let's get some shots on him. He's not within range, okay. Right turn. Fire more at the at Sierra 2. Right, here goes. Hopefully we can catch him with something. I can only hope some of that did a bit of damage. It's very quick. Still don't know what Sierra 3 is. I think it's a... Uh, could it be a skipjack? I'm not sure. I don't want to classify it and get the solution wrong. Let's um, slow our roll here at a minute here. I'd like to get a picture of what's going on out there, see if I can detect any incoming torpedoes. Okay, one going bash, past behind us, one coming this way. Gonna launch our second decoy in that direction. Oh, what's that one doing? Is it circling or is it just zigzagging? And there's one coming this way as well, so... Let's... I think that's my Rastra B torpedo, actually, that one. This one we want to avoid, though. So let's turn this way. You, Mr. Sierra Fort. I want to put RBUs on you. He's making a right turn, these probably miss. Let's fire at this guy as well, Sierra 2. He's dropping noisemakers. Probably within minimum firing range for these Rastra Bs, here we are. Which is certainly a problem. Uh, let's make this a zigzag torpedo and boosh. Give him something else to think about. Still firing RBUs. These ones might have a bit more luck. Let's see what happens. Uh, he's turning to avoid. Thing is, he's just deep enough to give himself a bit of extra time to do that, but. Yeah, not close enough, I don't think. Might have done some very minor damage. Mm, let's reload to set 65 or 2, shall we? Let's 
cease firing with the RBU for now. See if these get him. He's going straight ahead into it. Ooh. Right on the noggin. Okay, did a bit of damage there. Fire again. Just heard a launch from Sierra 2. Sounds like that's not good. Okay, we lost track of him for now. Fire at him instead. He's going very slow right now, which is not good news for him if he wants to avoid being hit by these. Looks like they're going to land right on his head. Okay, that was that was a good barrage. Could have been better, but that was pretty good. He's taken some damage. Clarit, this guy in front of us, who's launching torpedoes. Have a torpedo of your own, sir. Please don't hit my own ship. Please do not hit my own ship. You can't quite tell sometimes with those things. Ooh. Contact breaking up. We got him. We got him. He's going down. Oh, nice. Yeah, we absolutely nailed him. Absolutely nailed him, Tavarish. All right. Still don't know who or what Sierra 3 is at this point. Haven't got a clue. Buy more RBUs at Sierra 2, though. Looks like one of these torpedoes went active behind us, interestingly enough. Cease fire. See if these have any luck. He's trying to dive away a bit. He's still not going very fast, though. Come on. Give me something good. Nope. In range to get him with a rastro beat? No, he's too close still. Should we give him one of these? Give him something to think about. Alright, make a turn to port here, because there's, there's an enemy torpedo going right across our nose right now. And it's headed up to the surface as we speak. Ooh, what's that one doing? That might be one of mine that I launched, actually. In which case, we don't need to worry about it, because it's, uh... None of our torpedoes that I've fired can target surface vessels, so I'm safe from from my own stuff blowing me up, unless it's right out of the tube at the beginning and it turns back into my ship. Still don't know what this guy is. Let's slow down a moment. Let's see if we can get a clearer sonar picture. Oh, he's, he's dropping noisemakers, whoever he is. Oh, it looks like it's a narwhal. That explains why it's stealthier than the other two. Oh, you lucky bugger. That thing just missed him. The narwhal is one of the quietest submarines ever built. 110 decibels, this thing. It's even quieter than a kilo class. Ridiculously quiet. It's only one ship as well. I don't think it's a class. I think the narwhal was unique. Um, Which, yeah... I'm not surprised he's our slipperiest customer today. But let's see if we can give him some of this sweet, sweet hedgehog action. Let's 
speed up a bit. Oh, that one was a good hit. Again? Only the one, apparently. Is that one out of uh, out of rockets or something? Just need to reload. I think it might be that's what I thought. It might be what it's doing. It might be reloading. I'm not sure. Or it's out of ammo. We've got to use the other one on the front. Okay, launch transient. Don't like that. Oh, I think he's going for the decoy. <laughs> You're a fool. Oh, yeah, it's reloaded. We're firing again. Have some of that, Mr. Narwhal. That was another good hit. He managed to get under most of those. He's blown ballast. All right, nice. All right, right turn. We've got a couple of torpedoes headed towards us right now. It looks like he didn't just launch at the uh, at the decoy. He launched at us as well. Oh yeah, Mark 48s. Not not fun. Not not nice having those coming after you. I don't know if we'll be able to dodge out the way in time, frankly. Narwhal, I don't think he's a problem right now. He might be sinking, honestly, if he's blown ballast and he hasn't come up yet. So, for now, fire at the, at the LA class again. Yeah, there we go. That's some of that, sir. He's disappeared. He's friggin' disappeared. We, we lost... The solution went all pear-shaped. It's a good thing I fired when I did, to be honest. We don't get to watch the pretty explosions, but uh, maybe they did some good, I'm not sure. How's he looking? <laughs> He's not looking good, is he? <laughs> oh boy, okay, I think that round was probably a good, good one. This is some nasty holes. The Narwhal's still knuckling and dropping noisemakers. And he's gone. Right, the Narwhal is dead, that just leaves the remaining LA class, who is trying to speed away at the moment. Can I get him with a Rastra B? I could always launch one in his path, I suppose. There Make him change direction, you know. And, uh... Some more RBUs. Don't have a lot of these left, actually. Give him the works. Hold on a minute, is he surfacing? He is surfacing! Fire! Fire with the guns! Get him! Bloody hell. Uh, I think I need to turn in order to get the guns in their firing arcs. There we go. There we go. It's pretty marvellous to watch, I don't, I'm not going to lie. There we go. They don't sink that fast unless you hold them. 
<laughs> Lovely. We have done it. He's going down. And he's going down pretty down fast as well. I'm not surprised. Look at the damage. They don't go down without a, without a fight, these NATO subs, do they? They can take a real, some real punishment. Compared to the Ruski ones. Well, compared to some of the Ruski ones, anyway. Good grief. Alright, that just about does it, I think. Leave combat. There we go. LA, La Narwhal, and LA all sunk. We went through a lot of ammunition, though. We've only got five RBU salvos left. <laughs> five set 65 threes left. Oh, man. I, it's a shame. I was kind of hoping when one of them might go for a harpoon attack. Um, because it's always incredibly exciting when they do that, because then you have to start dodging surface missiles with the with the chaff and whatnot. Uh, but they didn't go for that this time. They just went for torpedoes, which was actually a little bit easier to deal with. Um, nice. All right. I reckon we got time for one more thing. Oh, yes, baby. Check it out. It is the Sverd Love. The ship that we so thoroughly humiliated in the Trafalgar campaign that I feel it deserves the opportunity to reclaim its glory here in this video today. Uh, we're going to try the Sverdlov and we're not going to be fighting submarines. I've set up a surface engagement for us in the Denmark Strait against, uh, it's a 60s scenario, um, against a bunch of 60s American ships. A um, few destroyers and they're going to be escorting an Iwo Jima class marine aircraft carrier and also probably a, a, a cargo ship as well um, and we're gonna we're gonna duke it out with some American surface destroyers in the Sverdlov um, and, and we, back in the 50s this thing was quite scary to the British at least because they didn't have any ships that could really compete with it um, until they got some better aircraft carriers but uh, we'll see how we fare against the Americans today so unfortunately there are no 60s British surface ships available to fight it against with it so uh, what are you gonna do Anyway, um, the funny thing about the Sverdlov is it has a, has some decoys that can fire, and then that's it. I think in real life this thing did have some anti-submarine warfare capabilities. It had to other torpedoes it could use, but in the game they seem to have modelled it with just little decoys and its 152mm big guns. And it's the big guns we're going to be using today to try and take out these enemy surface ships. They're going to be firing missiles at us and all sorts, and we'll be doing our best to try and not get blown to smithereens by them. And in the meantime, we're just going to be firing back with big, big good old-fashioned, conventional, gigantic guns. Yeah. Why not? We're now in command of the Alexander Suvorov. Wish me luck. <laughs> we might turn into a big fireball in minutes. Mere minutes. Uh, let's go 25 kilometers. Exostatus report. Yeah, we just got some decoys. That's it. All right. Turn on all the things. Go ahead to flank speed. Turn off to port there so we can get every gun battery in the firing arc. And what do we have out there? Let's see. Looks like a gearing class. Uh, a Charles F. Adams. That seems to be all we're picking up on radar now, right now. I, I, I've, I've switched on active sonar, even though I don't think we even have sonar on this thing. <laughs> okay. Solutions improving. They're a bit closer to us than we thought. And they're launching missiles. All right. Fun starting now. I don't know if we have any close in weapon systems. We might just have chaff to fend these off with. And that's possibly it. Alright, they're launching from over there. He's just trying to get a better solution and then hopefully the guns will open up. In fact, I'll double click on him. Cannot fire the main guns. Low solution on target. That's not great, is it? Okay, incoming missiles. Here we go. But the game won't let me use time compression with missiles incoming, which is probably smart, honestly. Here they come. What are they firing at us? Looks like... Not sure. Is that a harpoon? Not sure. Could be an Exocet for all I know. Probably not, though, on an American ship. 
Right, they're incoming. They're firing their guns at us, it looks like. Our solution on them is not very good, though. UGM-84s. Come on, we need to be able to see these guys. So we can shoot them. Let's turn back left a bit, I think. This one hasn't turned to attack us yet. That's interesting. Oh, here we go. That one's flown past. This one, this one's acquired us though. Pop chaff. And the gun's got it. Nice one. I'm glad we have those actually. I wasn't sure if we did. Spiraling down to its doom. Please don't spiral into me. No, there we go. Right, can we please locate these guys? Why is why are we having so much trouble? Is our radar really that crap? Maybe I've misidentified it, and that's the problem. Not sure either way. I think we might have to pop chaff in a second. Pop and chaff. He's missed. He went for the chaff. We're lucky it's the 60s and their missile technology is not very good. <laughs> that's all I'll say. Another one. Wait for the right moment to launch the chaff. Ooh, that was close. Problem with the chaff is if you pop it too early, the missile will ignore it. So you have to time it just right. Oh boy, here comes another. Oof. Bloody hell. Imagine being on this thing, seeing that coming in, the guns firing at it, and it coming towards you, towards you, towards you, and then veering off at the last second. Oh, I would not be in control of my bowels, I don't think, by this point, if I was on this third lot right now. We've got more incoming. Why can't we find these guys? My radar is on, right? I'm starting to think maybe I misidentified him and that's what's screwing with it, but I don't think I did, honestly. He's right there, apparently. Alright, we can fire at will with the guns, apparently. We are, our solution is rubbish, but it's not too bad, apparently. We can still fire, at least. Guns are moving into position. Boom! Pop chaff. It has missed. I don't know how well you can see the tiny missile flying through the air on the on YouTube with its terrible encoding, to be honest with you, but uh, that one I could actually see go through the sky past us. There we go. We could spot him. I wouldn't be at all surprised, actually, if the reason we can now see him is because we fired some spotting shots at him. Because... Whoa. I have a feeling the manual gunnery in this works like it does in War on the Sea. Which is another game made by Killerfish Games, and uh, in that game, you need to fire at the enemy to get a better solution at them because you can spot where your rounds are landing and stuff. All right, pop chaff. Got it. Nice one. More incoming. Those guns sound incredible, don't they? Yeah. 
The enemy accuracy is not very good, is it? I've got to say. Famous last words and everything, but they haven't got any gun hits yet. Pop chat. Boom. Got it straight away. He's still launching like crazy. Oh, he's on fire. We've got some good hits on this guy. <laughs> Fear the wrath of the 156 millimeter guns or whatever they were. He just exploded. Pop chat. Nice one. Oh my god, we totaled him. I wonder how much ammo we have for these guns. Oh, we got loads of ammo. 2,068 rounds. Not a problem. Alright, one more missile inbound. Get ready with the chaff. Pop it. Oh god. I thought it was gonna hit me there for a second for sure. Could always spiral back around and crash into me, of course. I don't know why we're going so slow at the minute. Have we taken a hit to the engine room or something? Oh my god, yeah. Okay. They have gotten some hits on us with the uh, with the guns, apparently. I just didn't notice. Alright, damage repair crews get on the propulsion so I can speed up a bit. Alright, we've got eyes on the gearing. Open fire on the bugger. Gearing's an old, old ship, isn't it? I think it might be even be World War II vintage. I think it's a... Uh, a retrofitted one, right? During shortly after World War II, yeah, and then retrofitted afterwards. Yes, so two ships of equivalent vintage squaring off with each other right now, looks like. Boom, go the big guns. So this guy doesn't seem to have any missiles, but he has got some big guns of his own. duking it out like it's like it's the first battle of the Bismarck Strait. Bismarck Strait, sorry, Denmark Strait. The Bismarck was involved in the battle of the Denmark Strait, so you can pardon my confusion. Any of our shots gonna land on the target here? Ooh! Pretty close, yeah. Just need to get a few lucky hits now. Oh, that looked good. Okay, propulsion's been repaired. Can we speed up now? We can. Like speed. Repair the rudder. It's a hell of a thing watching these guns fire, man, I tell you. Beautiful. there maybe and he's getting very lucky right now some of these do not appear to be hitting him they're just landing incredibly close although there is a bit of damage on the front there all right the rudder's repaired good oh I had an explosion. We got him. <laughs> oh boy. Can't even see us out there. We must be firing purely with radar right now. Because he's pointed directly at us, more or less, and he's just not out there. We are right. We're not out there, rather. I mean, if I look. Oh, he's going down. We got another direct hit with the big guns. Ah. Beautiful. 
Oh my god, okay. He Stop, he's already dead. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Nice one. However, where are the, uh... Where are the other ships? Or did I forget to activate them in the scenario? I'm not sure. I might have forgotten to activate them, in which case they're not here. It was just us versus those two. The other two ships didn't have any weapons. So, um... It's not like it made the scenario any easier for us or anything like that. I just wanted some cargo ships to shoot at, basically. But no, that's okay. Soviet intelligence was misinformed, apparently. There are no... There are no cargo ships here. Or if there are, they fled so far, my crappy radar can't find them. <laughs> All right, there we go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, not bad, eh? You've come. Oh, they were there. They, yeah, they just escaped. They escaped from my terrible, terrible radar. We have eighteen eighty-eight shells left uh, in 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 the magazines, and uh, yeah, not bad. There we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, as as the Alexander Suvorov sails off towards the west, hunting the Iwo Jima and the freighter, I think I'm going to bid you farewell. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this little what, another one-off Cold Waters video. Everybody um, wanted to show off a little bit of the anti-submarine warfare from the Soviet side because it's quite fun, and also um, yeah, I wanted to have a go with the Sverdlov and try and redeem its poor reputation after its dreadful showing in the uh, in the in the in the Trafalgar campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and i think we definitely did that so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls thanks very much for tuning in hope you enjoyed and i will catch you next time i am um, i don't want to make any hard promises right now but i'm thinking the next cold watch thing we do on the channel might be another campaign and i'm actually thinking it might be a soviet submarine campaign um because i think that would probably be the most exciting to watch between that and the south china sea campaign i actually think the soviet one might be a real nail biter to watch and that's what you guys seem to enjoy is the it's the it's the tension and um and the butt clenching moments of drama and the, believe me the soviet campaign has a lot of those so <laughs> that might be the next thing we do um don't know when exactly but that's probably the next thing we're going to do on the channel when it comes to cold waters so uh Part of me is also tempted to check out War on the Sea at the moment. I, I do enjoy War of the Sea and a new awesome new mod for it recently came out centred on the Dutch East Indies which allows you to play with lots of British and Dutch units in World War II against the Japanese. Um, same game engine, same made by the same developer, same game engine except it's with World War II units and um, you control all of them as a sort of strategy game type thing instead of just controlling an individual thing. You know, I, I talked about in the last video, Sea Power, that's coming up soon. It's essentially like a World War II version of what Sea Power is going to eventually be, I think. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Can get a bit grindy, though. I haven't made up my mind on whether, I want to, whether or not I want to do a YouTube series of War on the Sea yet, because uh, on the one hand, I really enjoy it, and particularly with the new mod that's come out, because, like, the... Um, the Southern Pacific, near the start of the war with Japan, with the British and the Dutch and everything like that, um, you know, the sinking of the Prince of Wales and the Repulse and everything, that's always been an area of World War II history that I've been particularly fascinated with. Um, the sinking of the Repulse and the Prince of Wales, um, it's something I've, I've really been... That and the Royal Navy's Mediterranean campaigns um, have always been really fascinating to me i've read books on the subject and i've really dug into it and i really really enjoy it um very underrated pieces of, of world war ii history if you ask me they get forgotten about a bit when everyone's talking about the big naval battles so um tempted to do something with that but um it's a different experience from cold wars for sure so i haven't decided what i want to do yet but i think the next cold waters we thing we do when we do it is definitely going to be the soviet campaign i think you guys will enjoy that but uh, for now, ladies and gents, it's time for me to go. Hope you enjoyed a little bit more service combat action, this time as the Soviets. And I encourage you guys to give it a go as well, because it's quite fun, as it turns out. It's a bit of a giggle. Um, you can even try have a go. I'm going to go in that, the Kirov there. The mighty Kirov, or, or one, of the, one of the aircraft carriers, perhaps. I'm not sure how well they would go. I mean, yeah, I suppose you'd get to play with helicopters, but that's probably about it. Um. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway. Cheers, my dears. Catch you next time. Toodaloo.